Mm-hmm. So being and uh, being intentional with your time and your space and your energy um, regarding that interaction with that individual, it kind of reflects on where you're at in life. Some men and some women see that the other opposite sex is just for a physical satisfactory um, experience versus a spiritual and a purposeful, you know, like life's purpose, how that person aligning with your purpose, Mm -hmm. how that person aligning with your dietary uh, preferences, how that person aligning with your, you know, family values. And I feel like we don't delve that deep into those things unless we are in a space that we're actually looking for long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. So knowing exactly what that person is looking for. Some people don't know exactly what they envision as their divine feminine or masculine reflection. And what I would say is that whenever you're dating and I'm still in a dating phase as well, you want to get to know someone, but at that time, they may try to impress you. Your last question that stood out to me is they may try to impress you. They're not being themselves. So you don't authentically get who they are. And that tends to show up three to four months down the line after you have been intimate or invested time and energy in this connection that was based off of falsehood or their pretenses of them being this person, you know, that that facade or this mask becomes uh, unveiled and you see the layers to that person that you no longer want to associate with, but you may have spiritual or physical bonds or soul ties with after you have engaged on a physical uh, level. Okay, now, that's very interesting, very interesting responses. Um, Mm -hmm. How, so how are you approaching, because you said you're still in the dating phase. Mm -hmm. So internalizing that as you hear it, Mm -hmm. how are you, is it going to change the way that you are going to go about dating now? Yeah, so I have currently been shifting to a perception that the universe is going to allow me to attract or someone to, or that person to attract me, the people that we are inside. So I'm in a space now that the more that I strengthen in, they call, you know, self-care gets outplayed, yeah. but there's a level of spiritual self-care that we can take as well. So I feel like the person, the divine masculine reflection of me is going to be the same things that I'm going to be doing. So if I'm, I like to fast, I do meditation, I do yoga, I partake in certain things. And now I recently relaunched my business. I feel like once I have these things in these Uh, particular things in my life, those are a reflection of the divine masculine coming my way. So I feel you have to embody. The universe says you attract who you are, not what you desire. So I feel like once we get in a space of that, we become who we we actually desire, then we will reap the benefits of what we're actually projecting out in the universe. Mm -hmm. So I would say my different approach to love is truly love myself. And I feel like that's kind of cliche in today's society. Like, what does that mean? That means different things for different people. For me, that means I literally have to wake up and drink a whole bottle of water. Like, I got to drink water. If I don't drink no water, my energy is stagnant, my attitude is short. You know, so just saying, what is what makes you internally happy? For me, relaunching my business was a form of self-care. It, it, it brought more purpose to my life. You know, loving on my daughter more, being intentional with my words when it comes to speaking to her and then the volume or the words that I have going through my mind. Mm-hmm. So it has to be a level of introspection. And also another thing for me to also consider when it comes to a different approach to love is finding out what unresolved trauma that I have from my childhood? Mm-hmm. What triggers do I have? You know, so becoming self-aware and, and reflecting introspectively, re- reflecting on who I am, the woman I'm becoming, and why I do or think the way that I am. And I feel like that, that, that shadow work and that pre-work that we do before we enter into relationships. So I am in the dating phase with someone, but I feel like we're both in a space of healing we're both in a space of uh, rediscovery of who we are, what we represent, what we actually want to portray in the world and embody that in the, in the, behind the closed doors. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it has a lot to do with understanding who you are, what you desire, and where you at actually in life. And I always have to be financially. Some people say, well, okay, work on yourself, make sure you're fine, your, your credit score is this, your finances, bank account is that. Some of this is the, the, the fingers can't touch. You know, some of this is, is within, it's the soul, it's the spirit, it's your mindset. And I do know, I've come to a realization, our inner world, our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So we going through certain things internally and you look around in your environment, your house is in array or, or your car or even like certain things, your bathroom is dirty, certain things are reflection. And for me, 
I have to clean. Before I do the cleaning products, I would just get up and clean when things weren't, weren't right in my, in my mind. I'll get up and clean and I'll sit back down in the clean environment. I'll look around and see my house clean. I'll start breathing and life is back to good. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so my different approach to love is finding what it means to truly love myself. Yeah. Finding what it means to, like I said, you have to go, delve deep. When I follow Dr. Umar as well, he's a, a school psychologist. He says yeah. that when yeah. you have an inner child, inner boy, in a little girl, in a little boy that has needs that are not met, you're going to start looking for that in your spouse. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you start projecting that role, that expectation, mm -hmm. or their lack of that did not get taken care of as a child mm -hmm. on that person. So I feel like there's a lot of inner work to take place to where you come to a relationship whole. You don't come to a relationship looking for the other person to make you happy. They may find ways to make you smile. They might find ways to gift you with things they know that you will like, but that they're not the sole purpose or the sole reason of your smile. Right. And I feel like that has a lot to do with the inner work and the shadow work. Yeah. You know, and as I heard you say, make, mm -hmm. make me smile. Somebody that makes me smile. No, if we are going to be intentional, don't you think it would be better if we, if they helped us to smile, you know, mm -hmm. help because the main responsibility of, of my smile got nothing to do with that person. However, mm -hmm. make, make seem, make sounds like force. Yes. Makes me smile. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and so, you know, when we, when we are organically, our minds are organic, our mind, our mentals, it's, it's an organic being. Okay. Mm -hmm. The brain, uh, it's still, it's still organic, you know, cause nobody really knows where the man is. Um, so I'm just saying we've got to, or we've also got to clean up our words, yes. you know, just like you're cleaning up your house and da, 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 you know, we got to, and you were talking about in turn, you know, listening, uh, the word make sounds like force. So mm -hmm. a person that helps me to smile, mm -hmm. you know, um, and one thing that is very interesting that, uh, changing frequency mentions in on her freak from her freak work album. Uh, I think the song is mind flex. She talks about that. We are inverted mirrors of each other. Mm -hmm. You remember in her song, you know, being, so are you looking for someone that is your inverted mirror? You know, that's going to mirror that within, is that what you're doing now as part, as, as you're dating and uh, you and your partner? Yes. Are these the kind of things that you, that you're recognizing? Yes, I do. I do desire to have that masculine divine reflection of myself and that's why I was um, stating earlier is that I'm inter interested in yoga and meditating or fasting he needs to be in alignment I would say we need to be idea I mean the same because there is a duality with the masculine and feminine energy there's the yin and the yang that brings harmonious and balance to any relationship but I feel like those are spaces for us to grow and learn and bond in that if they run parallel to each other, we're not forcing anything or making anything happen. They just flow naturally because we have similar interests. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and since, let's say like germs, <laughs> 99 .9 99.9% of relationships, when we're talking about attraction, you mentioned they all be, start out basically in that that germ, that germinated state of lust. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, I'm and all... there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like nothing is wrong with that, but there's that's just the first layer. That's the yeah. first layer of attraction. Yeah. That's not, it's not a superficial layer, but it's the first layer. And I feel like that's not going to be, that's not going to suffice in uh, maintain a healthy relationship in the long term. Like they say, looks fade. But the soul, the spirit, the intentions, the character, you know, the integrity, their, uh, their, their sense of honesty, you know, they have respect for you. Those qualities, I feel like are, are 
long-term longevity versions of um, longevity versions of a, of a relationship, longevity versions, but longevity uh, types of things or characteristics to look for in a potential mate that are more substantial than actually just having what I, what looks good to your eyes. You know, Mm -hmm. if you could close your eyes, would you still feel the same about your spouse? If you could, if you went blind all of a sudden, would you still feel your spouse's love or do, or would you be able to sense their presence? If you could hear, if you could see, or you could touch them, will you still feel it? And that's like, that's a spiritual and a soul connection. Because some these of us, things actually do give off their own o- organic odors, you know. Yes, pheromones. They start, they start talking about pheromones and da 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 da. See, that's organic. So mm-hmm. as you said, you know, when we're cleaning our bodies and our and our bodies are going to smell a particular time, they're going to take on a particular type of odor because mm-hmm. of the way that we're cleansing them. Uh, flexibility adaptability where are you at in uh making sure that that doesn't become a hindrance you know Mm -hmm. uh when we're flexible uh and adapting uh because sometimes i find out that when we make those kinds of um leniencies Mm -hmm. they end up becoming uh crutches where we could we justify why we are putting on shutters so where are you when you're talking about to deal with adaptability and flexibility because it's just like mixing your recipes for your your cleaning products where where are you at in 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 that vein of love so i feel like adaptability and you said visibility, adaptability, adaptability, and adaptability and flexibility, flexibility. OK, so I feel like in any relationship, even when it comes to friendships and family, you have to be flexible and adaptable to a sense. But when you have morals and standards that you already established prior to enter into that conversation or situation with that person, I feel like you should still stand your ground and uphold your moral values and your moral conduct to where you're not molding and shaping into something you're not authentically in with from within. Right. And I feel like you should be in a space to where there's different viewpoints or different perceptions of things that you should be willing to hear the other person out. And you may gain a new perspective that you may see, okay, I see from a different angle and that makes sense. I may adapt to that lifestyle or adapt to that way of thinking because it's a, it's a better version of me. So I feel like we should also look at things from a critical eye. We shouldn't let anything or anyone influence families, friends, or spouses to where it's outside of our norm and it's actually not to our, our benefit. Where I'm at with that, I feel like I'm not that adaptable. <laughs> like if a man comes up, I don't care how fine he is. If he's saying we eating chicken tonight, I'm looking at him crazy. So it depends <laughs> at exactly where we are at. But he's saying, you know what? Instead of us, you know, doing yoga at 3 p.m., you think can we do yoga at 6? That's still an alignment of where I'm at. You know, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll adjust. I'm adapting to your schedule. I'm not shifting. I'm not removing yoga off my plate at all but you want me just to change in time or you want me to change or the location i may be flexible in those regards but if it's removing like he wants me to cut out my friends or he wants me to not do my business if those are not in alignment with my life's purpose and what feeds me on a spiritual and soulful level then i'm not that adaptable in that sense okay okay and that's where you maintain your integrity to yes. your your the that self-love, the uh, that purpose, that intentional love, that's un- you, where you cannot compromise. There mm-hmm. are some compromises we just can't make. Not at all. You know, um, and so people tend to feel rejected when we won't make these compromises. Um, Mm -hmm. that become detrimental and alter the the balancement within our internal self to where it begins to, like germs, they begin to collect. Yes. You know, and no matter how you clean them, if if you've made that uh, sacrifice, it's, it's, you know, like they say, it's going to keep coming back. 
you know, mm -hmm. you have to take these supplemental doses. <laughs> yes. To try to try to maintain, uh, you know, a healthy a, a something that resembles, okay, mm -hmm. uh, health. Okay. So, do you feel in your environment? Do you do you feel like like a type of squeaky clean or you know you're all organic and everything i mean how do, how does that make you feel in your personality so i feel like i am a virgo my I am um, too yes yeah, so <laughs> my son is in virgo and i know that virgo were ruled by the planet mercury so it has a lot to do with communication and i feel like my environment is not squeaky clean because i have a three-year-old daughter that has toys everywhere at times yeah. but i do have a sense that within a week time i do do a deep cleaning open all the windows and that's kind of something similar if, if the weather permitting open windows burning sage playing even music. So it's like, it's more cleaning into like the by mural beats or certain sounds in my home mm -hmm. to the smell, to the light. Like I'll do more natural lighting than these stealing lights. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that I would do in my environment, but it's not squeaky clean because I do have a three-year-old daughter. And I, as myself, as a woman, there are times where I just don't feel like cleaning. But regarding to my kitchen and my bathroom, those are two integral areas of my of my apartment that I feel like are very, very important to keep clean. But other than that, the living room, I have toys all over it. I came, I got into a better space. I used to have OCD, but yeah. I, I got into a better space regarding my daughter. I know she plays, she learns through playing. And I know that her immune system is built up when she's moving around the house, putting stuff in her mouth, like she's just exploring. So I let that go of the whole keeping everything pillow facing this way, the chair scooted underneath the table. I let that go, you know, yeah. but, <laughs> but in regarding to that, I feel like my kitchen, my bathroom, those are the key places, the toilet, key places that I have to keep, you know, sanitary and clean. But, but other than that, I feel like I'm more relaxed where it's not that squeaky clean. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do, since life is good and we talk about blissfully organic, mm -hmm. how often do you hug yourself? That I have last time I got a good hug. Look, you always look like you're just uh every time I see I'm like, girl, come here, give me a hug. <laughs> so I do a lot, and I don't know if this is a too much, but I sometimes I turn on my camera like we I'm on my cell phone now. I look at myself. I have a mirror in the bathroom, I look at myself. I feel like when you make eye contact with yourself in the mirror, you talk to yourself. And I have an album right now that I listen to called I See Me by Tony Jones. It's mantras, it's affirmations. I have to hear those positive words playing in my head. And sometimes at night, if I've had a long day, even the sounds or the vibrations or the words you hear during your sleep can shift your mindset. So I feel like it's definitely an internal mindset that I have developed um, that has shifted, shift and shapes my outlook or my appearance or my way that I communicate with others or come across people in society. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you also do poetry, or at least, you know, you, you've been on the Dope Poetry's uh, stage uh, at Dope Poetry on Wednesday nights. Do yeah. you still, you know, do poetry? Uh, do you still write poetry? You know, what are you, what are you doing when you're, you're not cleaning? <laughs> So when I'm not cleaning, I'm thinking about cleaning. No, but <laughs> but on a serious note, I have I have been to Ice Event Center. I would say I have written new poetry, have not performed it. But I feel like when I go to Ice Event Center, I'm pretty much laid back and chill. That's like my time a little bit with my girls. We just chill and vibing. I do desire in the future to um, actually perform some of the new poems that I have written in the um at, at dope poetry or another platform so I definitely look forward to the getting back into that it is a form of expression for me mm -hmm. so I feel like I, I might write a poem about cleaning I do not know I might <laughs> I might incorporate that in my expression but I would say I still I'm still writing as we um mm -hmm. as we speak in my head I think about poems daily but I have not performed or published them yeah yeah well I want to encourage you to continue to journal to write your poetry, you a Virgo, you, you gonna continue to clean, you know, we, <laughs> yeah. Do you know, do you know, I have to force myself because 
some of that I don't think is 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 is, is healthy. You know, this constant cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Yeah. You know, we clean and ain't even nothing to clean. You know, and sometimes I have to force myself to just say no, no, just you know. The pillow is out of place and I have to go, no, it's okay. It's okay that the mm-hmm. pillow is out of place. Uh, there's a fingerprint. Of, oh, it's okay. Now, one thing that, you know, like, you know, I'm very craftsy. You know, I'm, all, I'm always into making jewelry or designing something and something. And I have my semi-precious stones, just like right now, all over the table, you know. But I know where everything is, you mm-hmm. know. Um so organized chaos you can yes, it's an organized chaos and yeah. and sometimes that chaos for me inspires me to become creative you know because it's like mm-hmm. we're over here and we're a mess <laughs> and mm-hmm. so when I go over there and start touching on them they go why don't you just sit down and make something mm-hmm. you know so yes. uh that kind of chaos, you know, uh, it, it, it calls to me. And then when I go to address it, it then it invites me to do something else, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Now I can deal, I can live with that. Um, but it's been wonderful with five minutes after our, our time with each other. And Likewise. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me to your platform. I see. Uh, yeah. you know I you know and I was serious when I told you that um I I'm still honestly you know after everything after I do whatever my last show or whatever I've got a couple next week and maybe one early in May that I'm ready to take a, a break from social media but I couldn't until I got you on the show and I told you I was looking for you all yes, it. yes, yes. Yeah, you told me that. I remember. Yes, ma'am. Well, I wasn't ever gonna find you because I was phonetically spelling the name, name wrong. <laughs> wrong. Yes. You know, I'm like, uh, he does. sounded it all the way out. I'm sounding it out, but anyway. So I was so glad to run into you at Carrie Can Flavors. You know. Yes. Jamaica, oh, I love that girl. Them, look here, them. <laughs> that plantain, that plantain. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that spicy ginger beer. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that cabbage. Okay, anyway, so. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you came from behind the counter so that I could get my- <laughs> You gave me the best hug. I felt so much love and energy in that hug. I feel like I felt healed after that hug. Any tension I had in my body from the hair follicle to my toenail was released when you hugged me. I feel like we was levitating in that hug. Yes. I could have looked down like, it's me, it'll be hovering off the ground in this hug. That's and and it's because, you know, we don't get to see each other that often. Yet it, when we do, it's about that embodiment. Embrace. That's so much in that embrace that even yeah. it's organic. Um, uh, some love, that love, that love. I feel that love just and your smile, girl. Now I think if, like I said, if I had, I was trying to get an attitude with you or something about something, something. I think if you just looked at me and smiled, <laughs> I would get all about trying to. <laughs> And they would say, I don't even know what we fighting for anymore. Let's just yeah. And I feel like that's the power as women. As women, once we raise our vibrations by reading the second woman book, we have the energy to shift and shape the the frequency of any room. And we have the energy and the power to shift and shape the energy of the planet. So I definitely believe the healing starts with the woman and it radiates out. So I give thanks. I'm greatly humbled that you see from me so thank you yes well ladies and gentlemen kings and queens gods and goddesses look at extraterrestrial beings (laughs) (laughs) bring us some new plants to the earth 
Ashamed. So that uh, my baby girl can make them into something, you know, and yes. bring it all chaotic, you know, so that it will uh, attract her attention. And then when you, she touches it, it'll call her to do something else different with it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm desiring that for you. And I'm desiring definitely um, because I, I can I, I look at you and I see self-love, you know, I just see love all over you so willingly you will attract that inverted mirror uh who will be just like you inward ashe 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 okay in a mm -hmm. physical manifestate uh manifested form you know because i love you know being with your divine reflection it's a wonderful thing, especially if it, you can get it to happen in this lifetime. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, ne that needle in these haystacks. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? Uh, even though being 63, mm -hmm. and I'll be 64 in September. Fine. Now, you're 65. You know, okay. 911 okay, is my number. Flavor Flav. I love my Flavor Flav. Now, put the big clock on, girl. 911 is my number. I am an emergency <laughs> call. Um, but you know, even as I continue to get older, mm -hmm. I still get excited with just the thought that, oh, I might find. I might run into my divine, you know, my, my twin flame. See, because I'm not one that really mm, endorses soul mates because my mm -hmm. soul is already my mate. I say, I say. So I can do uh, he definitely would be a reflection. But even at my age, I, even though I try to tell myself just to give up on, on the idea of, you know, having a companion, blah, 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 because I ain't no... I ain't no, you know, walk in the park. Uh, <laughs> you know, I ain't no walk in the park. Uh, I still get excited over the idea mm -hmm. of who he might be, what he yes. look like, and 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 all those things. Still, you know, and 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 we, as you were speaking way early in the beginning of the show, that inner child. You know, mm -hmm. that, that little girl in me, you know, gets excited, you know, and gets giggly. You know how when we used to have boyfriend, girlfriend in, in school, high school, we'd be all mm -hmm. giggly and everything, yeah. you know, and, and we still knew how to blush. See, now that's what I think is beautiful in a relationship when- you Get the, those butterflies. Yeah. Uh, when- that person still knows how to help you to blush, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the little cheeks, you know, put that color. See, love is supposed to put some color into you. Okay. You know, go, it's supposed to help you to glow, you know, have mm -hmm. that glow. Like you sitting over there now with that glow. Is, is that glow just all because you like to clean? <laughs> The, the scrub my face today. I use rose water on my face, so that might be shining. Yeah, okay. they shine, but I mean, you just, there's a whole glow, girl, you know, but you're always glowing. Every time I see you, you know, your aura's glowing, and it look, it look all scrubbed and squeaky clean and everything. <laughs> so we're going to get off of here, but before we do, you got to say, be different and love it. Be different and love it. Sergi. Be different and love it. <laughs> and you know, you know, I'm gonna come to the restaurant and bring you your pinwheel. Uh, meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, also know that the show don't end until I send that pin. <laughs> Than, it's more than a notion. It's all about the motion of love. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It got a sunflower on it. It is so beautiful. You know what I'm yeah. and so sunflowers actually follow the sun mm -hmm. throughout the day. You know, they turn. They face towards it. Yep. They face and, towards and, it. And every movement the sun makes, 
the sunflower mm -hmm. mix. And that's why I say it's more than a notion. It's about that motion. motion. So I'm going to send pinwheel love to everyone. Thanks for watching The Deborah Show. We are what life is good, blissfully organic. I, I love you, sis. I will see love you too. Soon. Thank you for having me. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.